what what are you laughing about what's so funny because i'm always you're always the one making noises and me making faces <laughs> inappropriate inappropriate no pants friday no pants friday no pants no pants no pants friday what is happening guys what is up it is no pants friday it's a late no pants friday super late uh, jason decided to evacuate his pants i don't I'm know if he knows what that means did you isn't that like he like shit his pants or I think that's kind of what that means in that context. You might want to check yourself. <laughs> you might want to like get some wet wipes. I don't know. Get some nappies. Clean that up. Clean yourself up. They call that man wipes. Yeah. Have you seen that? Shark, Something like that. Shark Tank episode. Dude wipes. Dude wipes. Yes. What? Thank you. Wait, is there, is there a man in your house? There what is, is happening? There is a dude wipe guy in the house. Guys, it is no pants Friday. We actually no have pants Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel so left out. <laughs> I think I'm gonna pee. <laughs> okay. You need some dude wipes. <laughs> yeah, you need some dude wipes apparently. All right, well we knew they were gonna be coming out. We did not know they were gonna be coming out. <laughs> Uh, with amazing new pink hairdos. That is some, so, that's better hair than mine. I kind of like that. I know, right? It's good quality. It's very good quality. Okay, so, uh, Vicki, why don't you introduce our guests, our live studio oh, audience here? Oh, my God. And, and okay, <laughs> so these, <laughs> these people are two of my best friends from Rhode Island, Lou and Rachel. Um, they're very funny. <laughs> they're very clearly, funny. clearly, they're very funny. So they're here visiting for the week and staying with us and we're they're looking at properties because they're moving here Yay. Yay. uh we've been on a five and a half year countdown for um four and a half years <laughs> so <laughs> they are moving here uh next summer and they're actually looking at properties and get you know getting doing some open house checking out <laughs> Lou, that's, there's some fabulous locks <laughs> you do a little pouty <laughs> you just look like something that smells bad. <laughs> well, well yeah, behind you. You. <laughs> oh my uh, god. It's good times. Oh, yeah. it's good times. <laughs> this one's good. good. But anyway. they're in town for the week. And then yesterday morning we went to we did all of our shipping mm -hmm. and then we headed out to California. Yep. And tell us about what we did. We went to Universal Studios. We went to the Halloween Horror Nights. Mm -hmm. Horror. 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 See, they're from Rhode Island, too, so they're going to say horror. horror. Halloween Horror Nights. Horror. Horror. That's horrible. <laughs> None of us can say the word properly, apparently. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we got there. This is the secret. You go after Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it goes for a couple of days after Halloween. And... Um, they let you into the park earlier during the day, so you get to see the regular Universal stuff in the afternoon. And then they close down all these portions of the park and they throw everybody out that doesn't have the appropriate tickets. And there were like, I don't know, like 10 haunted houses. They call them mazes because they're mostly outside. Yeah, there were a ton. Mm. Uh, we got to see every single one, every everything. Very short lines. Very yes. short. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Apparently the day after, after Halloween on a weekday is the best time mm -hmm. to go. Yep because they had gone to the one in Florida last year. And I have some other friends that have gone to the one in Florida just a couple weeks ago. And the lines, they're lucky if you get to see two or three of them in a night, because your lines are two and a half hours long for each mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. And we didn't wait more than 20 minutes in any line. Yeah. Most of them are walk right on. Mm -hmm. So it was really Yeah, cool. Crystal from Rosie's Closet said she loved the um, Instagram video. We I did a bunch of live videos, which some of them are probably still up because they're up for two, they're available for 24 hours. And you look, look at my story, I think it should still be up. But what was your favorite maze okay, or well, attraction? All right. Well, there were a few things. So I get scared really easily, but I still went through it because I loved it because it's kind of warped, but mm -hmm. it's fun to get scared. Mm -hmm. So I loved Poltergeist. Yeah, I loved too. Monsters. And I loved the horror. Horror. <laughs> horror, horror, horror tram that kind of dumped you into this vast open area where there were just crazy bizarre characters mm -hmm. with all sorts of sharp items running at you and screaming and a chainsaw i don't like with, the chainsaw which i found out 
Vicky is a real big fan of the chainsaw. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, what tell us what what is the monsters one? What is that? Okay, so the monsters one it highlights all the Universal monsters mm -hmm. um, that Universal Studios put out. So it's Frankenstein, it's Dracula, uh, the Invisible Man. And it was just phenomenal. Frankenstein, I think, was the one that popped out the most at everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was like the central character. But it was phenomenal, super well done. Yeah. Love, love. Bright of Frankenstein was like the best part of that one because they had her like on this mm. table and then she was all like chopped up, but mm. she was alive. It was a person and she was like kind of moving mm -hmm. around and stuff. So it was kind of cool. And the makeup was impeccable on a lot of these people. It wasn't just masks. And I guess, you know, we are in Hollywood, so mm -hmm. the makeup was fantastic. Mm -hmm. That was what I really loved. It was fun. The music was fun. There were hundreds of people that were actors that were working this this thing. I loved it. Kudos to them. Good job, actors. Right. It was. So these fun. guys are super, <laughs> gets super scared and jumpy and stuff. I don't know uh, what you're talking about. Not, doesn't get so scared. No. What, but what did you like the most about So I like the, uh, the outdoor, was it the holidays? Our oh, holidays. That was, oh, that was So cool. as you went through, it was all the different holidays. It started as Valentine's Day. And then it went to St. Patrick's Day, and they had different themes through each one, and ended up with Krampus at the end with big guy on stilts. So that, that was, was really creepy. cool. Yeah, was he was really good. cool. He was pretty scary looking. And they made it so you had to go through it in order to start going through all the different horror mazes. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have a choice. You had to walk through this this yeah. uh, spooky area. So you have a fan, Lou. Who is that redhead <laughs> babe in the back? <laughs> <laughs> I really thought my favorite one was the horror tram because you would take it's like when you go to Universal Studios normally, you would take the tour of the lot and it's like an hour, usually it'd be like an hour long and you go on mm -hmm. the little thing. The back but they, tour. Yeah, but for this it was the horror tram. And so you get on it and they take you down the hillside or whatever. And everything else like was kind of it was you know, more scripted and you're like you're aware that you're like in a maze inside, whatever. But the horror tram, it takes you, it's almost like you get taken like off site to this other place and mm -hmm. all hell breaks loose and there's like i don't know what the plane crash is from but there's like an entire plane yeah that's like it's from a different thing but they incorporated into the the horror nights it was so, basically it was a plane a, crash of clowns full size, yeah. full size plane wing over here broken fuselage mm -hmm. it's really cool yeah and then they have like cars on their backs and it's like you're down by this motel and there's just like people all over the place like chasing you and i like it that right it, it was the psycho motel yes yeah it was bates bates it was motel bates the real motel. one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i thought that one was pretty scary it was yeah it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun i'm glad that we went um i was kind of dreading it because i really wanted to go to universal to see harry potter because that's my speed and then we got to the horror thing i'm like Ugh. Yeah. I'm going to pee myself. <laughs> we got to do the Harry Potter stuff during the day. Bad. It wasn't did that bad. It was, it, did I yourself? did not pee myself. <laughs> it was pleasantly surprising. It was, it was a little scary, but not like too over the top. I yeah. liked it. Yeah, for sure. And you knew they weren't going to touch you or anything. So a couple times that we made people, we made them laugh, mm -hmm. made them uh, lose character. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. every time they came at my face, I'd swear at them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. And I did take regular video footage as well. So I will put a video together of like her weeks because i think tonight we're going to go to fremont and see all the crazy stuff happening on fremont mm -hmm. so so lou and rachel have been coming out here to visit me well they've been coming out here for a long time anyway before i lived here but since i've lived here they've been coming out here and visiting at least once or twice a year they actually even got married out here almost two years ago Aww. Aww. they're almost at the end of their <laughs> honeymoon period almost <laughs> it's all over <laughs> and uh, so now, like getting down to business, like it's always been, okay, when we move there, when we move there, when we move there, now it's like crunch time. Here we are. Yep. Here we are. Yep. With all of you. Yep. And I'm, I'm going to be sourcing like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are going to be looking at open houses tomorrow. So mm -hmm. hopefully getting a better idea of where they're going to go. So yeah, it's we'll all see. good. We'll we're see. excited. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, guys, we're going to cut these guys loose so we can get to the show. Uh, but thanks for coming. the wigs are fantastic. <laughs> did did Katie know about the wigs? No, I did not. No, did not. <laughs> she didn't know. Those are good. You brought these from home and everything. Yeah. I'm impressed. Very I'm impressed. That's good. <laughs> All right, guys. So it is No Pants Friday. Our AMA. Ask me anything. Ask us anything. So any questions that you have, personal, business related, whatever. We've got somebody seven eighty people watching right now. So get on. Ask some questions. Uh, yeah, somebody said, Gretchen said, it's Fremont where the cowboy and the banana thong poses for pictures. Yeah, He's it's one Las of the people that poses for pictures. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of like kind of 
freaky deaky people going on there. Uh, somebody was asking about my t-shirt. It says, show me your kitties. That's my t-shirt. She likes cats. Let me tell you, um, I found out today that wearing this t-shirt in public can be dangerous. Oh, um, we were at, we were at the mad Greek in what town is that Baker? We were at the mad Greek in Baker to use the bathroom and get some food. And we're sitting there and all of a sudden this man, I mean, he was probably like in his fifties. He's a big dude. He was 60 something. If he was a day, I didn't hear what he said. He just started coming at me and he like was unzipping his pants. And then he said something like, he goes, Oh, sorry. And he like zips him up and walks away. And I was like, what? And Vicky was like, what did he just say to you? What did he just say to you? And like, she was ready. I mean, this girl, she's from the East Coast and she will start like throwing punches and knocking teeth in, apparently, if scary. I was, a, I was about to like, she's about ready. She's about ready to throw down. All right, creeper. And she's like, he said something about like, oh, I read it wrong. And so I'm like sitting there trying to figure out like what I don't, could not figure out what was going on. And then it finally dawned on me, like he read my t-shirt and he thought it'd be really funny to like pretend like he was basically going to whip his penis out and um you said penis i said penis live Ugh. Ugh. well it is the uh anatomically correct term for it so is this like no pants after dark yeah because technically is. it is after 6 p.m and this is vegas yeah. it's pitch black out there right now yeah yeah no, night required fields in the uh he's going all cats pop out the kitties pop out the kitties well, she's allergic to them so you tell me what that's all about all right, we need to stop like talking in circles. <laughs> you people are weird. Cut it out. Cut it out. Uh, what's up, Allison? Yeah, we don't have a lot of wrenches. So, yeah, well, we're because um, we're because it's like a weird time. We normally do the show at one o'clock in the afternoon on Fridays, but we were still. We don't have a lot of wrenches in general, though. We don't like you know. We only have a few people there. We don't just hand them out willy nilly, right? Okay. Okay. Not everybody gets a wrench. Yeah. Seriously. Um. Anyway, guys, any any questions? Let me know. Let me know what's going on. Let us know. Let us know. Um, give us your questions and maybe we'll give you some answers. Mm -hmm. Actually, we definitely will. But yeah, I am. So I, uh, Knight Require Field and yes. uh, Casey had a thrift off the other day. Mm -hmm. I just, I saw it in my feed pop up. It was a live show. I've got to go back and watch that this weekend. Haven't watched it yet. I hear Casey may have been the victor. But I, uh, I, haven't seen but I don't know. I think I'm going to have to go go watch it. I have not seen it yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They had a, um, I don't even know what the premise about it was other than it was a I think him versus him be, thrifting. I think they were trying to be better at thrifting than the other one. Yeah, I kind of get that part. <laughs> 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 and hey, Heather, exclusive elegance is in the audience. Um, but yeah, so since it is later, I thought we're going to be going out. I thought I'd bust into some cider. This is gumption hard cider. I've never had it before, but our friend Hadassah was over and she brought these over. It's a little sweet. I like it a little less sweet, but um, it's all right. It's all right for starting the night off because we're going to go to Fremont. Mm -hmm. So for anyone who doesn't know anything about Fremont, if you ever come to Vegas, there's a bazillion casinos on strip, off strip. Um, there's like the main, you know, just the strip where all the main casinos are and that's where all the tourists like to go. Um, and you know, it's like, it is what it is, it's, but it's lots of lights, lots of people, lots of, uh, people gambling, blah, blah, blah. Pretty bad. But if you really want to have a good time, you want to go to Fremont because, um, Fremont street, the Fremont experience, it's basically where old Vegas was, right? Like the original casinos. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, what are the ones that are the gold nugget, golden nugget, gold nugget, golden nugget, El Cortez. There's like a few of them there, mm -hmm. but it's like, um, it's how the do you plaza. describe it? How do you describe it's just, it? It's old school Vegas. It's big. It's neon. It's the old school bulbs. It's it's also kind of like the uh, the really trashy side of yeah. Vegas too. So like the sense. main strip is super like commercialized and it's like pretty sterile. Uh, and then you go to Fremont and you've got like the older casinos and it's always jam packed with people. But they have this thing. It's similar to like um, in Hollywood where they have the stars mm -hmm. on the street. They have, um, they have like these spots where pretty much anybody, I don't know, I think you just pay for a permit, right? Yep. So anybody can pay for a permit. They have like these circles all along the street. They're buskers. It's street performers. Yeah. And so basically you're like, oh, I'm going to come up with an act. I'm going to juggle. I'm going to do whatever, you know, and then you go. But and most you... of it is people dressed, uh, not most, but a lot of it is people dressed in some really hideous costume slash outfits, taking pictures with tourists for tips. There's some really good ones. Like there's, there's some, some, really there's some that are where they're dancers or some where it's like they're drumming or just doing different things. There's some that are just super lame. 
And then there's just like the weirdos mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous and it's fun and you end up laughing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, cause there's like nobody, I don't think there's anything you have to do to get a permit other than pay your money. Yeah, I think you had to pay a certain amount of money to get a permit and a spot. Cause there's only yeah. so many spots too. So anyway, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. It's not a place where you take the kids, kids. Eh, I mean, you get up to a certain age, at a certain age, I think it's fine. Over a certain age, you mean? At a certain age <laughs> and up, not like one age. Yes, yeah, some are not dressed. Well, they have to be dressed to a certain degree. They have to at least be wearing pasties and a thong. But yes, I have but seen yes. there, there are women there sometimes where it's like all they have is a piece of duct tape, electrical tape on mm -hmm. their nipples, and that's yep. pretty much it. Um, I've done the zip line, I have to say. I've done the Superman zip line. I am a big baby and afraid of heights, and I did it. I forced myself to do it, and I cried through the majority of it. <laughs> Hated it. She probably peed on I will never. I, I did. I peed on everybody below, below me. Nope. <sighs> Not cool, man. And then there's the guy in the banana thong that Katie gets blackmail pics. I do believe that was me. That I mean, did we're not that. very good at doing the whole blackmail <laughs> pictures if you're just like papering them all over the internet. All yeah, over the internet. They weren't black. They weren't blackmail. I actually mm -hmm. got. Yeah, I made Casey take a picture. We with took me. every opportunity possible to show mm -hmm. those pictures. So that's true. They were true. posted almost immediately mm -hmm. and his, while he was drinking in his group, so he couldn't delete them. <laughs> he was okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. So Thrift Trader saying he thinks he could beat both Casey and Knight Required Field in a thrift throwdown. I don't know. Oh, I'd, I'd like, like to see that. that. I'd like to see that. No yeah. one, I would. But I don't know, Jason. I'm pretty sure I could beat you in a thrift throwdown any day. So if you think you could beat those guys, I don't know. I guess that means I could beat all of them too. Yeah. We need to at some point go do like a thrift throwdown, but we would have to be like as a team because we've talked about this before. I only thrift and sell men's clothing. So it'd be real. First of all, it'd be super boring. Secondly, I would probably lose big time because it really limits like what I can get. And I just, you know, I don't it's do true. hard goods. And sometimes I know some stuff and I'll, you know, I'll scout out stuff for you sometimes. But I think as a team, we kill. We kill. We would kill. Kill, kill, kill. All right. Show me your kitties. <laughs> so weird. All right, where are the questions tonight? We got 93 people in here now. Where are the questions? Ooh, exclusive elegance. Ooh, Heather, you should. That'd be a you good know way to do team against team. Yeah, you, you, I, she might beat us. She's, she buys a lot more high-end stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm doing just, I do just Well, you stuff. would, you would have, you would have somebody else, like the way that they do it. I mean, I know um, they already have like the official. The official rules. Well, the official, uh, throw, I don't know if they, what the, I don't remember what the series is called. That's like, I think it's the green room guys that do it. But, is it? Um, but I think you would, you would have different categories. So it wouldn't be, you wouldn't, it would be boring if all it was, was whoever can thrift the most highest, the highest value stuff. You would want to have different categories, like maybe like most unique or most uh, the weirdest or i don't know i would think you would want to have like, a category of things and, and like one of the categories would be like maybe the highest i don't know well if it's the green, the green room guys have to invite us to do it that's really what it I is know. i'll talk to casey about it okay whatever casey said that to us like six months ago he wanted us to do it well yeah you gotta follow up the dudes like working 20 million hours a day mm -hmm. so we'll get on it see oh those those are some fighting words right there <laughs> nights like you can try thrift trader you will lose whoa that's some serious some serious snack talking going on in the chat right now. Yeah, for sure. Oh, show. Yeah, we got. We have to. We have apply. to apply. So okay. We will do that. We will do that. We will apply. I'll talk to Casey about the official um, route we need to take in order to apply. Although I, I'm kind of creeped out when he says apply because I'm like, you either apply or you apply. <laughs> uh, Christian says, which hotel do you recommend in Vegas? Not that you ever stay in one. Well, we don't stay in hotels here, uh, to be fair, but I traveled here for 10 years long before I did stay here. And usually when our friends and family come out and visit, they stay with us, but I've been in almost every hotel here. So, um, it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're coming with your husband and you just want to you know, uh, hang out. I will say you want to stay away from certain hotels on the strip as nice as they are. They are definitely the party hotels. So they're going to be a little bit louder than others at night. And then there are the ones that don't have the casinos, which are actually really great hotels to stay in. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be bringing your own car, um, or Ubering and lifting places, it really depends on what you're here to do and see. So if you want to send me a message or whatever, I can give you some, some recommendations. If you want to stay off strip, there are some beautiful ones off strip. Um, it really depends. 
Yeah, it depends. But there are a lot of ones off strip that are really nice that are close. That are super close. And at least you're not like in the thick of like all the tourists and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I know for us, since we live here, we have ones off strip that we like to go to. Mm -hmm. um, when we do go down to the strip, we tend to really just go to the Fremont part of it because yeah. we're sometimes not really... we, Sometimes we'll go to the strip to see shows, yeah, obviously. See show. Or when we have guests and, and friends in town, and that's when you do the touristy stuff. But when you live here, you kind of tend to stay away from the strip. It's expensive to park. It's no longer free to park anywhere, uh, almost anywhere. Um, and, and it's just so much traffic in and out and getting in and out of places. So it's yeah. like, it's so the not, nice thing about much fun. Fremont is there's a couple of places there, the El Cortez, and then there's one other one that, that we've parked up before. Um, mm -hmm. El Cortez is one of them, but it's like right by Fremont and parking is free for guests, I think, or for people that are, yeah, guests, mm -hmm. but they don't like making you prove Fremont, like, Fremont is free ballet and almost all of them. So it's, that's, that's yeah. Nice. So, so we'll, like, if you were just going to hang out there, it's like, what we'll do tonight is we'll go to El Cortez. We'll park. It's free valet, so you just tip them a few bucks when you come back, and then you go into the casino and you basically just walk through the casino and walk out and go to to free lunch, much. hang out, go, much. go eat mm -hmm. some delicious food at Pizza Rock, look at all the freaks and yep. whatnot. Okay, so somebody had a question. Um, mm -hmm. Jackie B wants to know: Are you experiencing slow down in sales? Not at all. No. Both of us, our, our sales are, have exploded. Um, I actually just put a, did a post on, we both did posts on our Instagrams. Um, I did a post that I finished out October between um, eBay and Etsy. I did over 10,000 in sales, gross sales. Um, and I break down those numbers. Like we both do posts because we have separate stores. We're completely separate as far as our uh, sales go. Um, we do breakdowns like every Monday where we show our weekend sales and we show like our cost of goods and fees and all that stuff. And then on Sundays, we also do like for the week prior, we do our numbers. Um, but gross, uh, I did like over 10,000 between the two of us. We did, we, I think we over just went 20. 20. Mm -hmm. Um, and we generally net about 65%. We're, it's really weird. Even though we sell slightly different things, we, tend to be neck and neck and how we operate and how we um where how our numbers come out yeah we're so, always within a few hundred dollars of each other it's kind of strange so our sales have have exploded but mm -hmm. a lot of that has to do with the fact that we've been like working our asses off like non-stop getting ready for a fourth quarter mm -hmm. i mean we always are are listing every day but we've really um especially with all the the issues and slowdown over the summer and glitches and, and things that did affect our sales we kind of worked extra hard to like get ready for a fourth quarter and it's showing it's paying off so, um, I don't know. So Laura has a question about her hard rock cafe shirt from Granada. Can't find comps. How would you find a price for it? Uh, Laura, it really depends on uh, the graphic on the shirt. If it's just the standard hard rock, uh, then, then it's going to depend on whether it's made in USA vintage or not. Um, but for the most part, something like that, if it's a real cool shirt, um, hard rock cafe shirt, I'd probably price it 40 bucks, like 39 95 free shipping. That would be my price for just a hard rock cafe t-shirt. Um, if it's newer, it, again, it really depends on the graphic, but without seeing it, if it's just the hard rock cafe logo, then that's where I'd price it. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer is just starting to add free returns for domestic purchases, but for international, mm -hmm. never know where the market as buyer pays or no returns. Um, you should definitely accept returns international. Cause let me tell you, it doesn't you happen. almost, you pretty much never get returns. I don't, and you know, I've been selling for three years. I've had zero returns requested internationally. Um, you definitely don't want free returns and nobody, uh, international buyers don't ex expect you to have free returns or right. free shipping. Um, so for international, just say buyer paid returns. And that way, if there ever is a problem, they have to pay for it. It's not a big deal. Like I said, mm -hmm. never happens. And I do, we both each do a pretty high volume of international sales like i did 20 percent of my sales are international i did like 20 or twenty thousand dollars in the last year yeah um, I'm, just I'm international sales so you really don't need to worry about it uh let's see waste not want not my partner's nephew is getting married in two weeks everyone's staying at vidara it's a uh, you did write that correctly you're missing one consonant in there but i think it's v-d-o-r-a mm -hmm. or a-r-a -A. um vidara that's a nice hotel um, actually that's where, uh, Victoria Smith was just staying Oh, really? last time she was here. That's where we picked her up. So couture buttons you should look out for, uh, what, couture buttons? what is that? I'm not sure what kind of button, what do you mean? Like buttons on clothing or I'm not sure what you mean by that. 
Gretchen, if you can just clarify. Yeah. Uh, and Christian, I'm hoping you have time for lunch or brunch or a cocktail or coffee or something while you're here. Uh, I know you're here with your husband, but definitely reach out to us because we'd love to meet you yeah. in person. Full show. Uh, awesome. Kara, Kara Cooper, um, were you saying hi to Dana? Yeah, I was going to say, What's up, hashtag Dana? queen popping in with the other what, wrench. What, what? Um, anyway, so Kara Cooper was saying, um, seems she seems to remember hearing that we'd be able to send an offer to a watcher. Have I missed that or is it not happening yet? Okay, so there is this feature that they did tease to us at eBay Open, and it's basically called uh, Offers to Watchers or whatever. Um, it has started, but it's, it's rolled in a very limited release, and I don't know if that's because they are wanting to test it. They probably want to test it first. Maybe they don't want... Um, I don't know how the process exactly works, but I have seen screenshots. Um, they're doing it more with smaller sellers right now, like particularly what they call, I think they call customer to customer sellers or something like that. So they're basically like hobby sellers, much smaller sellers, ones that aren't necessarily doing it as a business like we are. Um, and so the way it works is when you have it, it shows in your screen, it'll say, it'll ask if you want to make an offer. And so it'll be a specific item. Let's say you have eight watchers and you'll choose to make them an offer and it sends an email to all the watchers on that particular item and it will make them an actual offer. And then they can, one of them can choose to accept it and then it gets sold. Um, it's very similar to something they do on Poshmark. We don't have access to it yet. No, neither they one of say, us have it. I've seen screenshots of it. I've seen people talking about it. I, I haven't seen it yet personally. Yeah, they say they are working on expanding it and it will happen at some point, I'm assuming. Um, believe me, it's driving me crazy. I want to be able to do it, um, but mm -hmm. we can't right now. But it is something that they're working on. So uh, Gretchen said she sees saw, sees that people look for high end buttons for fixing clothes and craft items. Um, I don't do anything with buttons, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. I, the, your your guess is as good as mine on that one. So I would definitely just be sorting um, something on eBay to see what the sales are. I mean, I know that you know buttons like Chanel and Saint John and things like that do have some resale value. Um, but it's not something I sell, so yeah. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, DePage Picker, I'm drinking Gumption Hard Cider. It's just a basic hard cider. It's a little sweeter than what I would normally like, but um, we have it in our fridge because some friends brought it over, so I thought I would try it. Uh, so Swift, Swift Seller, do you pay for the return for internationals that go along with the choice of paying for domestic returns? Okay, so the, here's the deal. Um, and this is the case for shipping too. When you decide, when you set up your policies, when you decide what you want to do, you can choose separate policies for domestic versus international. So for me, I have free shipping on everything domestically, but I charge shipping. I do calculate shipping for all of my international sales. And then um, likewise, I do free returns for everything domestically, but internationally, I choose to have buyer paid returns. Um, everybody does. Nobody does free returns on international sales. Don't even worry yeah. about it. And it's nobody not, really does free shipping. And nobody expects it. Nobody expects yeah. it. Yeah. So it's really easy to separate those out. It's not a big deal. If you have your business policy set up, you actually, within one policy, you get to differentiate between the two. Um, so it's really simple. I have a video that you can look up from earlier where it, it just search business policies and the video comes up. And, and it says exactly like I do, you know, 10 years ago, we had to walk miles through the snow to the post office and fill out three damn forms for each package. So true. Uh, you know, there were, there were at least three forms in triplicate. And you had to stand in line and God forbid it was around the holidays and you needed to ship something out then forget it. Nobody, there was none of this online shipping postage stuff 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. we're old school. So yeah. yeah, I mean, if we could handle and figure out how to do that, like I said before in several videos, if I could figure out how to do that with no yeah. knowledge, I didn't even know where half of these places were in the country. Never mind. Uh, Knight actually had to walk yeah. miles to the snow to get the post office. He got frostbite once. He actually has two toes on his left foot. Did you know that? I heard that about him. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why he walks kind of funny and he tends to try to do everything out of his house and he doesn't drive much because, you know, the two toes. The two, the two toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drummer saying, why was I not using pirate ship years ago? Three well, toes. You guys. Sorry. So we're going to keep bringing this up uh, just because we know that there's some people that maybe haven't heard about it. But seriously, guys, seriously, cubic priority. If you don't know about cubic priority, figure it out. Go seek out some information. Uh, and that's for domestic shipping. And then the other thing is simple, simple export, export rate, rate through pirate ship. If you are shipping anything first class internationally, anything four pounds and under internationally, you have to be signed up for pirate ship. It is free. You ask them to include you in the simple export rate program. You have to ask for it. It's not you automatic. You have to ask for it. And I guarantee you it is cheaper than what eBay's uh, shipping discounts are for first class international. 
And so if you do any international shipping of your own, which you should be doing it yourself, because like we said, it's super, super easy. Um, you need to be signed up for that program because I am drummer. I'm not sure how we could spread the word anymore. I have to be honest with you. I'm saving about a hundred dollars a week, at least by using it myself. Um, we talk about it every single show ad nauseum. And I'm sorry for that. For those of you that have heard it ad nauseum, but we get questions every single day as well. Mm -hmm. So we're not being paid by pirate show. No. We are not sponsored in any way. It is a free service free. Yep. Might, add, might I add free and you guys <laughs> need to go check it out because you're just costing yourself yeah. money. First of all, I need to make a correction. Knight, Knight has, uh, has corrected me here. He has three toes. Yes. On his left foot. I, I heard. I apologize. Uh, but as far as, um, us repeating this over and over again, listen, we do live shows and we do shows three days a week and they're always over an hour long. A lot. Some of you guys are here for every show and we love you. We love that you come for every show, but there are a lot of people who come in and out. And so there's a great chance that, especially if you're not in the boss Facebook group that you haven't heard us say it. So that's why we just kind of keep saying it over and over again. And hopefully it like gets to everybody. It's kind of like spreading the gospel, you know, we've got pretty put much some, put some ties on, start knocking on doors and going around telling people about it. There's a lot of that here. Uh -huh. I know. So mm -hmm. it's Nevada. Uh, so uh, you're only going to want to use pirate ship on your cubic priority items and your first class international. Actually, you can use it on anything, yeah. but your pricing is only going to beat eBay's direct shipping by using it for those two categories. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's the same pricing. We keep hearing over and over again, people saying, oh, I didn't save anything. I didn't save anything. I didn't save. Well, you did not qualify for either cubic shipping or first class international if you didn't save anything. So that just, that's all there is to it. That's just those two specific categories. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Knight, so you just did a, a mm. video on pirate ship and people love it. So yeah, totally. And I'm glad I want everybody to do videos on it because everybody's got a slightly different audience. And so the more people that know about it, especially with the changes coming up, prices are going to be going up. I've heard that I've heard from a good source that cubic priority is going to be going up a little bit as well, something like 3.5 or 3.8%. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, still, you're still saving tons over regular priority prices. So um, you want to make sure that you're paying like the cheapest amount on everything at all times because it's tough making mm -hmm. a living doing this. Yep. We've done a couple of videos on on the pirate ship thing. So, it, you know, over the past few months. So yeah. it's really good. It's and Joni really says, thing. if you connect to your PayPal debit card, you get 1% back or Correct. whatever card you have. Maybe you have a card that you're like um, saving up miles because you like to travel. Um, you definitely, I mean, think about it. you are, you're buying shipping every single day. And if you're a decently high volume seller, you know, you're spending a lot of money throughout the year, mm -hmm. just on shipping. Even if your buyers are the ones paying for the shipping, um, it's like, you should be like using that to your advantage. So, uh, Leslie, you're looking right to sign up for international shipping on pirate ship. You need to send them a message and ask them to add you to what is called the simple export rate yeah. program. Because if you're signed up for an account, you you can automatically get international shipping. You just need to like send either send them an email or there's also a chat window. And if there's somebody available for the chat, you can go ahead and just like send them a little chat and just say, please add me to the simple export rate program. And then they'll get back to you and let you know. And it's usually pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, JG just busted out a $10 super chat All with you. no strings attached. There isn't even a message on there. It's like free form. So we're going to go old school. We're going to do a little bit of super chat. Super chat, she's super chat. Hey, yo. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Ow. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, all right, Hip Hop and Mama Kelly says, hit that thumbs up. So we've got what? Well, we got 115 people right now watching live, and we got 30 thumbs up. All right, what if do we have here, show? too? So we, I saw there were a couple questions I up here. I was in the middle of telling you. I know what you're doing. You were just telling them thumbs up. We know what that is. Shut I was up. telling them something very important, and you interrupted me. Um, so th thumbs up, thumbs, thumbs up, guys. Thumbs down if you don't like this business right now. Thumbs down that, and then thumbs up me. Hip flipping mama. Sizely was in Wade's chat Wednesday night. Yeah, it's, uh, what's, what's the guy's name from Sizely? Eddie. Eddie, sorry. Sizely is just one person. It's Eddie. Um, so well, he's got a team now, but he, yeah. Said they can't wait to meet you guys. Started following my YouTube. Oh, great. Hit flip nice. Yeah. Eddie's a really nice guy. He is. Um, let's see. Heather said, do I ever repair any of my high-end Lalique or Dom pieces? I have not sold any Lalique in several years, so I've never had any repairs to do. Lalique? Lalique. It's a crystal. It's not as fun French, as saying French crystal. Splack! <laughs> Splack! Ugh. That's fun. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Let's see. 
What do we else? Do what else do we have this? here? Do I look at this one? I'm not even looking at you. Seriously, she said I was. She said half a beer. Half. If I was in an accident, and this is just my face was like this all the time, would you still love me? No. I'm what if shallow. it made me? What if it made me like twice as funny? And I got a settlement because of the accident, so I got like two million dollars. Well, I suppose yeah, I could stay with only you two million, but tax free. All right, but I was like this. I would just keep you in the house. <laughs> then I never have to go wear pants ever. No, it would be amazing. <laughs> I would hide you. <laughs> I'd hide you away, kind of like the guy from Goonies, sloth, <laughs> sloth from Goonies. You'd be, you'd be in a room in the basement, <laughs> chained up. I just be just baby hey, roots. Hey, hey. <laughs> As long as, I, as long as I got to eat my baby room, I'd be okay with that. Uh, so, Seriously, check the toilet tank for whiskey bottles. I don't know what is going so, on. So, yeah, because it's so different from how I normally act. It is dark out. It's kind of like, you know, whatever. Uh, so, Corey, my favorite Corey, Corey number 111815. <laughs> my favorite Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Just gave us a super chat. Corey says, relatively new to your channel, but I love you guys. You keep me motivated, and your videos have helped me tons already. Thanks. Um, here's here's what I have to say to Corey. Corey, been thinking about you a lot. Corey, 111814 <laughs> doesn't have anything on you because you're the best Corey out there. It took 111. Thousand eight hundred and fifteen tries, but finally Jesus got it right. <laughs> I can hear laughing from the other room. There you go. Thanks, Corey. I appreciate it. Oh my goodness gracious! I don't even know what is going on. Uh, yeah, Gretchen. See, Gretchen knows. I'm getting warmed up to hit the strip later. I'm getting warmed up for Fremont Street. Uh, so. JC wants to, has a very important question. Are all your kitty shirts thrifted or gifted? It's combo, combo of both. I do refuse to, I will not buy, because there's like certain ones that I would like to be able to find. Mm -hmm. um, well, like Taco Cat was one that I really wanted, mm -hmm. but I refuse to go. I could have just gone on eBay or anywhere and just bought it brand new. It's you know, most cat shirts, like, I mean, they're not worth anything other than mm -hmm. the love in my heart. Um, the love in my heart. Yeah. So, but I, I, I love being able to find them out thrifting. And then also I do get some of them um, gifted to me from other people. So I think this is one from Dana. I think Dana yes. found this one. Yeah, that was from Dana. And Vicky was like, you can't wear that on the shop. I'm like, that's inappropriate. You can't wear, you can't wear that on the shop. And I was like, why is your mind so filthy? Okay. <laughs> I want people to show me their kitties because I love kitties. And if somebody has kitties, I want them to show them to me. Okay. And then you took it to some like weird, messed up place. <sighs> Gross. Uh, you're gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tracy, uh, Tracy Johnson says her, her husband wants to know what she's laughing at. Apparently, Katie. She's had half mm. a hard cider and I'm drinking Diet Pepsi. I have no Here's idea. A, I, have a, I have a saying that I've, I've had for a long time. I don't think Vicky's ever heard this one. Here's what I have to say to your husband. If he doesn't know, he doesn't deserve to know. <laughs> okay? Okay. All right, what kind of uh, other questions we had here? We had a few. Uh, Lady Loves BMC said, I do the eBay global shipping. How do I do international shipping? We've got a couple of videos. If you follow the channel down below, Katie's done a couple of videos on um, international shipping. We've talked about it a few times. It has nothing to do with the global shipping program. Um, to be honest, at this point, I don't necessarily know the proper way that you stop doing global shipping. I've I mean, never done, I've never used global that shipping. Tra that transition over, because I did global shipping for mm, approximately three and a half days when I very first started, because I was <laughs> like, oh, international shipping, that sounds really hard and overwhelming. So I signed up for global shipping, and then I was like, eh, I'm going to try doing it myself, and then I did, and it was fine. So um, I'm not exactly sure, like, the process. I know that you have to go, I think you have to go and, like, turn it off, I think, in your settings. I don't know. But then you have to have business policies set up. I'm like, um, I'm like night. I, I walked uphill both ways. I used to live in Rhode Island. There really was snow mm -hmm, uh, uphill mm -hmm. both ways to the post office. I Global shipping didn't exist. Online shipping didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. My husband said, I'm a dinosaur. Yeah, says, my husband said, what are you watching? Sounds like a bunch of silly girls. I said, yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah, man. What's wrong with that? Is your Tell husband going to have to meet us? Is he, is he coming to Vegas as well? Because we're going to be extra silly. We're extra silly in person. I don't know. If you know Are this. there any mold arama machines in Vegas? I don't. What? Do you, what I don't know what a mold arama. All right. Well, speaking of uh, Vegas and machines, what are your 
you have like a few favorite machines that you like to play on. I'm like a slot machine person. Yeah. I, you know, some people are really into like Keno or poker. Yes. I realize poker has better odds than slot machines. It's just boring as shit to me. Um, I play poker. I, I like playing poker at a table. I like playing Texas Hold'em. I like playing blackjack. Um, I don't play table games that often anymore, but I used to play them a lot. Uh, Pi Gow, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I like, I don't know. I like different kinds of slot machines. Well, you like the older ones. I like the old school penny slots. So when mm -hmm. I can find, you know, when it, the bigger and brighter and, and crazier it looks, the less they pay out tends to be my experience. So I like the... I like the other ones. Yeah. Uh, Jason is backing up my statement. He says extra silly, true statement. Um, yeah. I, so like, I hate to, I hate losing money. Like to me, gambling, I don't understand like the whole gambling addiction and losing ridiculous amounts of money and going down that whole rabbit hole. Um, so for me, when I go out, if I, we're going to go gambling, I have fun with it, but it's more like, okay, how much money do I want to lose tonight? And it's like, maybe I'm like, I only want to lose $60 or I only want to lose a hundred dollars. And so we'll go play slots and sometimes I win, sometimes I lose, but it doesn't really matter because I'm just like having fun. And plus your play, if you go out and you make it last, it's like you get free drinks while you're gambling and stuff like that. But I really like, there's, I like the fun ones. Like there's a Willy Wonka one I really like a lot, the Oompa Loompas. And uh, I love the, um, what's the cow one? Is it Moolah? I don't know. Moolah. It's like this Moolah one. And it's like these, the cows are getting like, um, are, are getting abducted getting by, aliens. by aliens or something. Yeah, it's really cool. It has like cascading reels, which I like, which I enjoy. But basically, I just like that they're constantly going moo, moo, moo. <laughs> so that's pretty much what my criteria is for slots. Is that they uh, make me laugh. So I like the people watching. Okay, so he said, uh, Dupage Picker said, wax figures made while you wait, usually at zoos and museums. There is a couple of people that do that down on Fremont Street, actually. Um, I've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't play the eBay slot machines. I hear there's no pictures and the video is glitching. <laughs> there was a, there were eBay slot machines in yeah. early uh, 2000, mid 2000s. They did exist for a very short period of time mm -hmm. um, and they don't exist anymore. They pulled them out of the, the casinos uh, very quickly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like all you can eat crab legs. I'm going to do, ooh, Chris, ooh, Christiane. Maybe we should get together for all you can eat. Whatever. We'll go to one of the places where they have other stuff for you to eat. She's not into the crab legs so much. She, she loves lobster, but not crab legs. So, Christiane, we should check out a place to get all you can eat crab legs, and I will come. We'll throw down. We'll see who can eat the most crab legs. Yep. I'm just saying it's going to be me. So, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, have we seen Carrot Top? I've seen Carrot Top a few times. Katie has not. Um, he usually also goes to the um, AIDS walk that um, I've done the past several years with Dana. Um, and he's usually there. And I've, I've, I've taken pictures with him a few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Susie, I do gamble, but it's not. She doesn't gamble a lot. She's I don't not gamble a, a lot. And I don't chase the win. I never chase yeah. the win. It's like, I usually, I, will, I usually lose a few hundred dollars. She's willing to go a little bit further. She now she'll like, win bigger, but uh, like I couldn't lose as much, you know, she'll, she'll lose $150, but then she'll win 500. So I never win anything big, but it's like, you know, it's like if I play with $60 for a few hours and you can't win if you don't play, I play 40 cent spins. It's like, or I just hang out behind her and like, Ooh, and ah, and make lots of noises whenever she gets stuff. She, likes she yells. She yells. I'll win 40 cents. <laughs> Woo! People think I want a royal or something. She's crazy. <laughs> I have seen Carrot Top pre-surgery and post. I've seen him here. And then I have actually seen him on tour back in the 90s. Uh, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ed, hey, Eddie's in the chat. Uh, let's do a boss group sushi, all you can eat lunch sometimes. You know what? There, I'm in have, with that. We have a couple places we like, but there, we have the one place. What's it called again? Oishi. Oishi. We're actually going to go hopefully sometime this week with our um, <laughs> friends that are in town. But I think that's a great idea. I mean, I don't know that any of those places could accommodate how many people might show up for it. But mm -mm. Oishi has like the best all you can eat sushi here in town because it's like, I think lunchtime's like 21 or 22 dollars dinner's mm -hmm. like 26 or 27 dinner's better because they have more things on the menu but you know when you think of all you can eat it sounds no, their menus are the same for lunch and dinner no there's some stuff that's not available at the lunchtime um i think you're thinking of a different place but i could be wrong i am correct 
<laughs> anyway, uh, when you think of all you can eat, you, it sounds kind of like, mm. eh, I don't know about that. It's like buying uh, sushi at the grocery store or something like that. But Not it's here. actually really, really good. They have an amazing menu and the food's really, really good. And so it's kind of probably our favorite place in Vegas to eat. Mm -hmm. Because we go, we usually go for special occasions and stuff like that. Or somebody's in town, yep. we're like, we got to go get tacos at Taco Taco. And then we got to get all you can eat sushi at Oishi. Those are like our two, our and, two and things. And Pizza Rock. Well, yeah, and Pizza Rock. So those are like our three places where we like to take people. So, yep. Yeah. And reselling is like guaranteed winning. You're right, Aaron, because I have to tell you, I used to gamble a lot more when I uh, when I first moved here. It's kind of that thing you do, like you get you, you're trying to out, out Vegas and you you learn stuff. I, yeah. I gambled a lot more, and I won more, but I lost too. And one of the things that I get that same type of fun rush, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. is um, is thrifting. So uh, thrifting or garage selling and buying is just as much fun for me and yeah. i'm actually going to make money with what i buy no matter what it's yeah. always a guaranteed win well somebody said that ebay was like gambling and i would disagree because i think that um there's I, no gamble if you know what you're doing if you yeah if you if you learn what it is that you're doing and you get good at it you know now if you're somebody who loves the source and you've only got a couple hundred listings up and you're not like putting that the you're not putting in the balance of work that needs to be done then yeah, it's going to be a gamble because are you going to get the sales you need to? No. But if you follow all the best practices and you get that those inventory numbers up of the right stuff to sell, of the things that people actually want to buy, there is a formula to it. And um, if you're you know firing on all engines, you know you're going to have you're still going to have that EKG of sales, but you're going to succeed. And so mm -hmm. I don't know. If we're going to go with a gambling analogy. I guess it'd be like counting cards. Uh, Dupage Picker, is Rio still the best buffet? Rio is still the best seafood all-you-can-eat buffet from what I hear. Um, I've never been there personally. Um, that's nowhere near the best buffet in general in Vegas, no. But as far as the seafood one, I hear it is. Um, auction Professor mentioned both of us last night. Aaron says, I don't know who that is. I mm -mm. um, have to go look, Interesting. Look, look that person up. Uh, yeah, somebody... Oh, Christiane says that I couldn't agree more about the getting the high from thrifting. Yeah. And you know what? But for me, and I think Vicky's similar to this, it, it's a, it's a multi-part high because it's like, you know, there's the people who are kind of addicted to the sourcing part of it and they get too much into the sourcing and they don't like to do the listing part and mm -hmm. they have a hard time staying motivated with that. And then that's how you end up with these crazy death piles. And so you have stuff of value just laying around your house and your inventory that's not listed for like a year, two years, three years. Um, for me, it's like, I have to have the rest of it along with the thrifting part. So I go out, I source, I get really excited when I find something, but I can't handle like it just sitting around here. It's like part of the, that payoff is I need to get it listed. So people are looking at it and seeing it and able to buy it. And then when they mm -hmm. actually buy it, it's like, that's like kind of the end of it, you know, yeah. that, that excitement, but it's like, I need exactly. the whole package or else it's just not, mm -hmm. it doesn't work for me. So, um, let's see. What do we have here? Um, pool noodles and boots. I use pool noodles and boots just to take photos. I don't Frankenstein boxes to fit boots. Um, I have never needed to do that. Um, do we ever hit flea markets? Yes, we do occasionally. It's actually way too hot to do it in the summer months. It's just too hot. There's really only one decent flea market here, as big as this place is. Um, there's one decent flea market and we do, we've gone a couple of times. We actually just went a few weeks ago. Uh, we don't go all the time cause it's a bit far out and we tend to find our best stuff. Uh, at least Katie does. And I do too at, at savers and, and garage sales and things like that. But we do have, um, one flea market that we go to. It's a, it's a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. Usually we can find it. There's a, I, I actually just sold a leather jacket, um, that I bought. It was funny cause when we had gone to broad acres, the flea market here, like months ago, when did we go? Like. I don't even know how long, six months ago, maybe. I don't mm -hmm. know. Months ago, there was this leather jacket that I had asked about, but it, it was priced a little high and I was like, wasn't really sure about it. And then we came back and it was still there. I ended up buying it and getting him to come down in price. And I just bought it for 30 bucks and I just sold it the other day for 110. So um, you're definitely going to be able to find more stuff, but you're going to have to pay up quite a bit mm -hmm. a lot of times. So thrifty dad loves us both. That's really cool to hear. Nice. Too. Um, let's see. Auction professor is extremely knowledgeable dude. Well, then he must have really good taste too. So thanks. I'm going to have to go check this dude out and thrifty dad too. Cause neither people, neither person 
Have I have I watched anything by it? Uh, I'm assuming they're both on YouTube. Well, Thursday, I think is he's on. I think isn't he the one that's on um, Instagram? I follow him there. Uh, but see, Eddie, uh, he just said I'm at my on my way to 35 plus listings today. No spend November, and then he quoted me saying because Eddie and I have been friends for a long time, and, and we were kind of uh, reselling buddies, and we message each other and stuff. And he has quoted me as saying, you're good at sourcing, mm -hmm. not good at listing. <laughs> That's very true. That is Eddie, absolutely true. Eddie is one of the, when it comes to vintage streetwear, he is excellent at sourcing. He knows the game. He knows the players. He knows like all of the, he knows the wholesalers. He knows people who do, uh, you know, all kinds of different stuff like within the business. And he finds excellent stuff i can't even imagine what would happen if i went through all his unlisted inventory and, and could see like all the t cool t-shirts mm -hmm. he has and just amazing stuff but he's working on getting better at listing so i'm happy to see that and jason is listed 90 shoes in the last two days or something like that I just yeah, I mean, that's, yeah awesome. that's awesome um so let's see he's oh okay professor uh, auction professor is an expert on ephemera that's a lot of the stuff that i used to sell back when i lived uh, on the east coast um old paper postcards vinyl costume jewelry has great educational content. I'll definitely check them out. Um, I love all that old stuff. It's just not really available out here. And that's why mm -hmm. I've, I've, I changed to thrifting and uh, doing, you know, hard goods and, and thrifting and vintage and stuff. But I absolutely love, my love is in vintage and antique items. doesn't matter what they are. Um, I love all kinds of antiques and vintage. So I know a little bit about almost every category within those things, including the things that you just mentioned. Um, I just don't find enough of it out here. So I can't source as well out here. I can't source yeah. as well. I used to, I used to go to auctions all the time. I used to go to, you know, flea markets all the time. They're just, the stuff here is just not as plentiful in that realm of stuff. You know, Nevada is too new of a state. Well, it's not, not, not just that it's too new of a state. It's a state where a lot of people come and go. It's a very transient. It's very state transient. Structure. And so um, there just, is, there aren't a lot of people who have been here from the beginning and their family, mm -hmm. you know, there's some of New that, Englanders but... live in New England for 17 million generations. They just never leave. They mm -hmm. stay in the same town in the same state. So you have all of your grandmas and great grandmas and great, great grandmas antiques in your house. Cause it's probably the same house they lived in. That's just the way it is. So every time you go to a garage sale, you're finding stuff that's a hundred years old that somebody priced for a quarter. It doesn't, you know, just doesn't ex exist out here. Yeah. So. Yeah. For sure. Okay. I wish I still found good paper, good ephemera stuff. I just, I just don't. Mm -hmm. I used to love postcards and Victorian photo albums were some of my favorite things to sell and scrapbooks, Victorian scrapbooks. Just don't find it out here. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Any other questions, guys? Uh, real stitch, Katie. So do you tell why don't you like to list multiples with a drop down? Um, I just. I mean, I, for one thing, I don't really sell a lot of stuff where I have variations. Um, I, have, I, you know, I mostly am a selling one-offs. So I very rarely get every once in a while I get some things where I actually have like where it could be variations if I wanted to. They're just kind of a pain in the ass, and because I don't sell a lot of things like that, um, it's just a little bit different way of listing stuff. So when you're doing like sell similar or you're doing different, it just kind of I don't like the way it works. I would rather so if I do get something where I have three sizes of a particular jacket, because sometimes I will do some retail arbitrage. And I might get like, let's say three different sizes. I would rather have three separate listings with each one of those sizes. I just like the way that looks better. I like the way it is for people searching. I just prefer that. Um, I would say it's more of a preference thing than anything else. Cause I'm sure it's totally fine. Especially when we're talking about new, new listings with new inventory, um, new tag stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's totally a preference thing. It's not in no way is it giving me an edge on anybody else or anything like that. So yeah. And I noticed Colleen is in the chat earlier, um, mm -hmm. and she's, I see her there now. I just want to say out loud, Colleen has been doing full-time or was trying to sell full-time on eBay for less than a year, I believe. Mm -hmm. We did- She's um, been doing it for two years. Uh, we did a, but full-time kind of. Okay. We, uh, she really ramped up her stuff earlier this year. We did a store review for her, a live store review. She was really brave a few months ago. And I have to tell you, she is kicking ass. Mm -hmm. She just officially retired from her job so that she could be a full-time reseller. Yeah. Uh, not even 40 years old, and officially retired, a full-time uh, reseller, and she is killing it. She, her numbers are far better than mine, and uh, she's just really <laughs> working really hard. So I just wanted to uh, say congratulations, because that's a well, lot of work. Here's the thing. So Victoria, she's been doing this for like 15 years, 
Mm -hmm. and she's really successful at it. But I've been doing this for three years. Colleen's only been doing it for a couple of years. I think that you've got between the three of us and other sellers that are successful, it's like proof that when you hear people say eBay's dying, nobody can sell on eBay, nobody can make a living on eBay, it doesn't work anymore. I think it just shows that that's garbage. I think that I think it maybe it's harder to do it nowadays. Like absolutely, the markets change. Um, there's a lot more competition, so it is harder for just any average person to like just start selling on eBay and making money. But it's absolutely possible, and people can be super successful at it um, even now, starting now. Um, I have not had a real job in it will be eight years next month yeah i have been selling on ebay for almost 15. i've been buying on ebay for far longer than that more than 20 years my first id is more than 20 years old and i haven't used it in forever yeah. but um you know i i've been selling full-time for eight years and i don't <clears throat> anticipate that changing anytime soon well and it's and you know uh i think that you know you, people think that oh if i have a bunch of stuff and I just go on to eBay, create an account, start listing stuff, I should be selling. And if I'm not selling, if my stuff isn't selling, then there's something wrong with the platform, something wrong with eBay, somebody else is somehow responsible for me not doing as well. And the reality is, you know, in pretty much 95% of the time, when somebody either makes a post where they're like, are your sales as slow as mine? Or somebody like contacts us or, you know, or you just see a post where people are talking about sales being really slow and being really bad or somebody wants help because they don't know what's wrong and why they're not getting the sales they want. Or when we do these store reviews, if you go back and watch our store reviews, there's one thing that's a common theme throughout and pretty much every single time beyond just having good listings and having good things to sell that people actually want to buy, it's the fact that they probably don't have enough inventory and that's what's holding them back. Because obviously you have to have the right stuff and you have to have good listings using good policies. But once you have that figured out, it's like, what's it's your a number inventory? Scale. It's, it's like, a number I scale. have 1800 listings, you have like 2,500 listings. Um, and you know, uh, Colleen, I don't know how many listings you have if you're still here, but maybe you can like let us know like how, what your inventory number is at right now. Now, of course, like you could be one of those unique sellers where you you can maintain 300 listings and because of what you sell, you can make a full-time living and do really, really well. That's We're talking to like the masses here and the majority of us and people watching okay, this so are see, probably- she's at, she's at 1,200. See, she's at 1,200, so, so she's got really good stuff and she's got a large inventory. Yeah, but she had, if I remember correctly, she had a really good sell through to begin with. So she, mm -hmm. that means she's got, she has good stuff to begin with. So mm -hmm. that's that's really good. Um, and you know, some people are gonna have 50% sell through, some people are gonna have 10% sell through. It really depends on what you sell, whether you're looking for that fast nickel or slow dime, whether your items are repeatable items, whether they're high demand consumable items, or they're uh, you know thrifted and one-offs or vintage or antique, all of those factors come into play into what your sell-through rate is. So you know if you're selling mostly used, mostly one-off, mostly thrifted items, whether they're hard goods or whatever, if your sell-through rate is anywhere from eight to twelve percent, that's pretty average. Mm -hmm. If your sell-through rate is higher than that, or even much higher than that, and what that's what you're selling, then you're doing something right. Yeah, that's it. For sure. Gretchen says, I admire that Vicky is not a procrastinator. I try to remember WWVD. Well, that sounds kind of dirty. <laughs> that sounds gross. That sounds pretty dirty. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. but but seriously, we so both Kelly just said face it, Katie and Vicky are workaholics. We pretty okay. much are. That's, that that's, is true. That's a fact. But I will say, we were talking about this earlier today with our friends. Uh, you know, we really love what we do. We have a lot of fun with it. And the great thing about um, doing this kind of work and working for yourself is that you do set your own hours and you can be flexible. Like we have friends that come out of town for a week and yes, we're not going to get as much work done, but you know what? We left yesterday morning. We got all of our shipping done early in the morning. So we were out the door by eight o'clock. We headed to California. You know, I think I re I think I did a couple of sell similars just so I had a couple of listings go up. I didn't um, even do that. She didn't do that. But usually we try to do that when we go somewhere. We, we went, we hung out in California. We had lots of fun. We were up late. We walked like 500 million miles according mm -hmm. to our step counters. Um, and then we came back today and we had to ship on when we got back home. I did a couple of listings. We caught, caught the mail lady by five minutes. Oh, it was minutes. awesome. It was amazing. We thought we were going to take everything to the post office, but we I got a couple of listings done before we did the show. And then we still did the show because we consider this to be part of our job. Like we, we're committed to doing this. I don't like having to do it at a different time. 
but we made it work. And we're so, glad we still have 120 of you here with us yeah. at a different time. That's pretty good. So we're sitting here on a Friday night doing the show, but then as soon as the show's over, we're going to go out and have some fun with our friends. So it's been a long day. I didn't get anything listed today. Yep. Yeah. And, but we were still doing things that, you know, have to do with our jobs and our work and we love mm -hmm. doing it. It's like, we can make it work. So do you guys hold around a hundred thousand listed in your eBay on a bad month at 10%? Uh, I have well over a hundred thousand in, in inventory in my, in my eBay store. Mine's around a hundred thousand. And you know, like I, I said earlier, I don't know if you were here, Jason, but, um, and my, I actually did, oh, I did about $10,500 in sales this last month. So, um, yeah, and I did just around 10,000 between Etsy and eBay. Um, I have well over a hundred thousand listed, but my sell through rate is, is generally eight percent. It's under 10 percent. I'm, I'm eight, eight percent pretty solid. Yeah, right now, I think I'm close to 10 just because it's Q4 and, you know, stuff mm -hmm. flies out a little more. Yeah. So. And, that, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that our philosophy is that we like to price things higher. So we certainly could, you know, yes, uh, you know, there's, perception of value, um, we could price things a little lower and probably have stuff move out faster without underpricing it because we do price mm -hmm. quite high. Um, we do. But we do I, price higher than most people do selling the exact same things, but we also get those prices. But I, per, for me personally, I don't want to have to do that kind of a hustle where I have to bring in a higher volume of items that I have to then uh, take pictures of, measure, list, you know, photograph, package up, ship out, store, everything. Um, so for me, keep maintaining no, the close net, to about 2000 mm -hmm. items, JG, no net profit, net profit is about six to seven a month. Yeah. We actually have really good um, ROI on our stuff because we're, we be, partially because we do list really high, um, but high enough, but not too high that people won't buy our stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, we thrift, the majority of our stuff is thrifted and then we price stuff higher. And so we're actually at about 60, 65%. If you follow us on, um, Instagram on Mondays, we both do a breakdown of our weekend numbers. And it's pretty typical that like if we sell a thousand dollars worth of stuff after shipping, after fees, after cost of goods, after everything, we come in around Between 600 six, six, to 650 six um, mm -hmm. net. So it really is, it's pretty consistent. So, all right. Um, Christiane, when I counter an offer and they decline, is there any way for me to re-offer something lower? Christiane, I've done this a few times and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So somebody will offer me, make an offer on something. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to counter offer. And so I counter offer and they decline. And then I'm like, you know what? I really wish, because I thought we were going to do a little play in here, guys. And then I'm like, you know what? I would accept the initial offer that they made. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll just go contact, I'll go back and look at the offer and there, you can contact the buyer and I will contact them and they'll be like, Hey buddy, listen, I will totally accept your original offer. If you want to go ahead and re-offer that amount, um, I will accept it this time. And I would say two out of three times it does work. And sometimes they just ignore you. Um, mm -hmm. but I've definitely done that before. Um, and it can work. It's like, you know, counter offer regret. This really is like uh, after dark here. Emily's like, one more glass of wine. I'm going commando. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is a family show. This is a family show. Yeah. Um, actually, we're uh, we're headed out shortly. So I do still have pants on, full disclosure. I'm wearing pants. Yeah. Because you. Sorry. I always have pants on. Are full of betrayal. Clearly, I'm a prude. Yeah. Asshole. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, see, I, the I, peanut I, gallery says, take off your pants. <laughs> I will have to put pants on to go out. Although for my street, I would not stand out being in my mm -hmm. box of briefs. So, all right. Yep. Um, you can, Christian, you can directly contact the buyer, but you can contact them. You're doing it through eBay because you don't have yeah. their information any mm -hmm. other way. It's totally okay to contact them and say, hey, I've reconsidered and I'd be willing to actually accept that offer if you want to resubmit. Yeah, you know, whatever. Because what you do is, I mean, I'd have to be looking at the screen, but if you go and look at, you you open up your, like, go to the page of that item, you can usually see, like, your, you can view all offers or whatever, and you'll see the one where they decline, and you'll see what their name is, and you can click on that, and you'll be able to contact them. Um, yeah, so it works. It happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. uh, Real Stitch, we did not get a ring light yet. I'm saying that's probably something we'll get sometime, like, after the holidays, probably. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so it's a little dark in here. Sorry, we don't have any overhead lighting in this in this loft. So mm -hmm. during the day, the lighting is better for us to do this the is show. Romantic lighting. Mm -hmm. It's romantic. It makes that's a nice look. It's like a good atmosphere for you. Kids. Look for like kissing. you really, really. You kind of look like Jim Carrey. 
know when you do that with the lip. Was that like this? Stop. Just stop. <laughs> now you just look like your sister making faces. Uh, um, yeah, if there's anyone sillier than me, it's probably my sister. Or mm -hmm. I don't know, or maybe we're at the same level of silliness. Yep. Lady in the Tramp, that must be it. Yep, she's the Tramp. Am I? Well, you're the one with no pants on. I don't know. That's true. I'm a little scruffy. See? Real Stitch says the firefighter. Yes. The, what about the firefighter? firefighter carrot. When you do the no teeth, the, the no upper lip, that's what you look oh. like. Fire Marshal Bill. Fire Marshal. It's awful. It's an awful character. That's a more. It's Stop. hard to say a more when you don't have a top lip, I will say. You are M's, not well. M's are hard with the no top lip. Anyway, all right, guys, it's after 7 o'clock. Normally, we would be happy to stick around and chat with you guys some more, but we do have our friends here, and we want to go out and have some fun on Fremont and eat some meat to balls. We from... had some new people in we here did. tonight, so uh, night, come back again, because it was fun chatting with you and mm -hmm. your three toes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for sure. So, guys, we will be we will have a regularly scheduled show on Sunday, Sunday Live Hall. Mm -hmm. um we'll probably maybe sunday morning we can we can kidnap rachel and make her go do some sourcing with us and mm -hmm. so she can be on the show with us um but so that show's going to be on sunday um and yeah so that's pretty much it i mean that's I, it i'm sourcing tomorrow so we'll hopefully i find some cool stuff i haven't sourced this week at all i, I gotta find something Ooh. i'm gonna have to Ooh. i'm gonna have to like yeah last time calling was my on, source last time calling was on fremont she was with us mm -hmm. Woo -woo! All right, guys, have an awesome night. Have a really good weekend. Um, Head boot, Vacal, uh, newbie to the show, need to be in your Facebook group, then you just need to request to go into the Boss Facebook group. There's a link down below. There's a link down below, guys. And hey, please uh, give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and join Boss Facebook group if you have not already. Okay? So have an awesome weekend. Do something fun. Get some work done if you're planning on doing some work. Uh, and we will see you next time. So have a great night. Boss up. Boss up, bitches. <laughs>